Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Oakland Athletics franchise here on MLB The Show 23. Today, our A's take on the San Diego Padres and Fernando Tatis, who's having a great season. Jose Suarez takes the hill for our A's, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in the bottom of the first off of Zach Wheeler hits one off of the wall, and he's got himself a double. Two on, one away for Jonathan India, who continues to swing the bat well, but look at the glove on Xander Bogarts. That'll bring up Bucky Carver looking for a run here, but unfortunately into the glove out and right. That's Tatis with the catch. Manny Machado goes down looking, just sitting there. That's not something you see very often from Machado as Jose Suarez is screaming his way to the dugout. Here's Reed Hoffman with one on in the bottom of the third inning and not going to make the catch out there on the warning track. Reed Hoffman has himself a double. Nobody away for Oscar Gonzalez. He hits this one out to center field. It's in shallow center. It's caught. No tag up attempt on out number one. So, Vladdy Jr. to the plate. Vladdy hits this one out to center field as well. This one quite a bit deeper. Still gloved out there in center, but this one is a double tag-up attempt, and it is good. You're not going to get Hoffman on one of those. Jonathan India, like I said, swinging the bat well, and this time it pays off with a base hit and the second run of the game. So Zach Wheeler giving up two, now the bottom of the fourth inning, and Kenny Stevens gets some good wood. No pause on that ball. That one's into the stands for his 11th home run of the season. 391 feet, a 109 exit below for the former first-round pick. Jake Cronenworth going to ground one down the first baseline. Easy out. And the Oakland A's come away with a win at home, 4 to nothing. Nice shutout win over Tatis and the Padres. Suarez goes to 8 and 6. Zach Wheeler to 7 and 5 in the sweep. Now it's time for the big moment of the video. Draft time. Some targets we have for this year include first baseman Nikki Seibel, who looks to smash lefties and be okay against righties as well, but looks more like a DH than a guy that you want in your outfield or your infield. Starting pitcher Sean Roberts looks like he's going to give up hits, and he looks like he might give up a few long balls, but he'll be a high strikeout, low walk guy, which could be very appealing. I also like starter Albert Ragsdale, who might walk a few batters, but he's very high strikeout and velocity with solid control and tons of stamina. Of starters though, I think Juan Chavez is my favorite. Now I know we didn't really scout him and I know he's 20, but his future projections for everything outside of homers per nine is really good. Trevor Chambliss looks like a nice contact third baseman with speed, looks like an Oakland A, with still some power and a little bit of fielding. But I think if we can't get one of the starting pitchers, it might be third baseman Kevin Hairston, who is 18 and he looks like he could be a very good all-around player. His future projections show contact, power, vision, discipline, fielding, reaction, speed. He just has it all. Let me know who you like the best. And without further ado, let's draft. The Yankees hold the top pick with the Cincinnati Reds, Colorado Rockies, Pittsburgh Pirates, and San Francisco Giants rounding out the top five before we pick at number six. Let's just see how these chips fall. The first overall pick in the MLB draft, the New York Yankees select First baseman, Nikki Seibel. Typical Yankees being full of DHs. Kidding, or am I? With the second pick in the MLB draft, the Cincinnati Reds select third baseman, Trevor Chambliss. Good pick, I liked him quite a bit, as you know. With the third pick in the MLB draft, the Colorado Rockies select starting pitcher, Kevin Simmons. Wow, low rankings from the MLB and our scouts. Maybe they know something we don't. The Pirates take starting pitcher Juan Chavez, whom we didn't scout, but I did love him, so oh well. The Giants took my man Albert Ragsdale right in front of us, who was the starter I was going to take. So that leaves us on the clock with a decision between Sean Roberts and Kevin Hairston. The comments section might hate me for doing it, 
Twitch chat didn't. This guy looks too good to pass up on. With the sixth pick in the MLB draft, your Oakland Athletics select Kevin Hairston, third baseman from Massachusetts. Now the rest of the draft is a total crapshoot as all of our scouted players are gone. So with our second rounder at pick 49, we go with a boomer bus guy in Ray Macias, a first baseman who could be incredible or absolutely terrible. Competitive round B, pick number 74. We go for a reliever in Robbie Rankin. More boomer bust potential. And I was told to focus more on pitching. We're trying to, but these options just aren't as good. Maybe starter Carlos Garcia will prove me wrong, as he is the selection in the third round at pick number 88. But in this series, I've been more upset with our bullpen guys. So Dewey Taylor is the pick in round number four at 118 as we stock up on these boomer bust pitching prospects. In the fifth round, shortstop Kerry Duncan looked appealing as a guy that I thought maybe could be a 70 overall, 70 potential type of dude. We'll see how right I am about that. You can take chances this late in the draft. And we did that as well in the sixth round as we went with the first baseman, Omar Huerta who was the only player left to have max potential at 99. So we'll see if we can get that and we give that a shot. First attempt to sign our draft picks after the draft and Garcia declines his offer. However, the first to sign with the A's is Kerry Duncan. So that's one down, six to go of our seven picks. We go into a game in Seattle against the Mariners. The Mariners have not been very good this year. We are, of course, chasing a playoff spot and we're looking to sweep the Mariners at T-Mobile Park. See if we can get it done. Robbie Ray on the hill for the Mariners, and as a Mariners fan, I know that's one guy you don't want on the mound. Eric Lauer has been potentially a Cy Young candidate. I mean, for us, this is as close as we're going to get to one at the moment, and Lauer gets a strikeout of J.P. Crawford with the bases loaded in the third. Bit of a pitching duel going on. Kevin Kiermeyer swings through the high cutter at 90 miles an hour. So two straight strikeouts with the bases loaded. And then Luisa Raya's right into the glove of Jordan Walker. Kevin Kiermeyer up in the bottom of the fifth. He goes down swinging for the second out of the inning. 10th K for Lauer. And then Arias again, another chance. And Anderson charging and throwing to end the fifth. So still scoreless in this one. Rather boring for those in the seats, I would imagine. Here's Bucky Carver. This one into center. That one caught to get through the middle of the six. Jason Givens almost hit. He gets out of the way. It's a wild pitch. Sending a runner to third base. So Givens, what could he do with it? Well, unfortunately, he'd get out, but it wouldn't score a run either. So Tyler Soderstrom now will get the base hit in center field, and it will score the game's first run. Coming off of Robbie Ray in the seventh, and that opens up the floodgates as Kenny Stevens comes up and pops one out to right field. It is gone. His 13th bomb of the season, 418 feet off of Robbie Ray, and it is suddenly three to nothing when Ray was pitching a gem. They bring in Prolander Baroa, and there's a base hit into right field for Tim Anderson, scoring the game's fourth run. So Domingo Acevedo in a non-save situation comes in. Tyler Soderstrom takes care of the final out of the game, and it's a 4-0 win for your Oakland A's on the road to get the sweep, and Eric Lauer with an absolute gem. Back to signing picks. Hairston needs more time, but Carlos Garcia's second offer is accepted. So now we have two out of seven signed. But we may run into our first issue in drafting in this entire franchise because we had so little guys scouted that we ended up picking. It's going to take a while before they're comfortable negotiating and we might run out of time. We finally get to the point where Hairston will negotiate, but he declines his first offer and that hurts because we need those spots open for other guys to get scouted week by week and get more negotiable with us. Angels come into Pandora Field to pay us a visit, and this is the number one versus the number two team in the division. And the Angels looking to get the sweep 
on the road. And we just can't let that happen. Yuri Perez will take the hill. Five and six for him with a 330 ADRA. All of our starters are doing quite well. But Patrick Sandoval is a Cy Young candidate legitimately with under a two ERA. And Jonathan India is looking to slam him up. And he gets it over the head of the left fielder. Jonathan India will find himself on second with an RBI double because you just can't stop Reed Hoffman from scoring. So India with the benefit there. Bucky Carver with a solo shot later on. And then a big strikeout here to get through the middle of the fourth. We go to the eighth and look at Zach Jackson getting a big strikeout to keep that 2-1 lead. Colby Gaynor gives up a walk to start the top of the ninth for his save bid. Alex Verdugo goes down swinging with the high inside heater. Then Hunter Renfro, already 0 for 3, goes down swinging as well. Two strikeouts for Gainer and Taylor Ward is jammed. India comes in, gets the pop fly, and the A's with a 2-1 to victory behind Yuri Perez's sixth win of the season and Colby Gainer's 23rd save, handing Sandoval a fifth loss. Hairston's second attempt to sign, and we just max that thing out just to get him to sign. Just take the bag, brother. And he will sign. Huerta, Taylor, and Macias are in the box now. And we still have another guy waiting in the wings. This could get really dicey as we have until August 1st. And it's July 26th right now. One more game in this episode as we host the Baltimore Orioles. A team we like to play because they had been a young up-and-coming team just like us. This is a split series right now. 12-5 us and then 7-6 them. Nas Nasty Nestor Cortez on the hill for us. 8-7 with a three some odd ERA. This is like all of our pitchers. And here he is getting Adley Rushman called strike three. They say he went around. Ryan Mountcastle comes up and looks like Nasty Nestor finds his way out of the first inning. A little bit of dangerous stuff there. Julio Urias, the big free agent signing for Baltimore, really bolstering their starting rotation. He's had a decent year for them, of course. Tim Anderson goes down swinging. Urias going to be a very tough guy to get. And Bucky Carver up at the dish, and he's going to hit this one down third baseline. That one is thrown onto first, and that ends the first inning. So both teams putting a threat but not bringing anything across. And Michael Conforto going down swinging to get through the middle of the second. Adley Rushman is popped up. Soderstrom's right there for the infield fly rule. Ryan Mountcastle with two away and two on. He lands this one in front of Kenny Stevens. Kenny comes up throwing, but it's not in time. The Baltimore Orioles take a 1-0 lead. Anthony Santander hits this thing deep to left field. Reed Hoffman ranging back at the warning track, making the play. Colton Kowser in the fourth had a chance to bring some in, but he strikes out. That brings up Heston Kierstad, who goes down swinging again. And it is 1-0 for Jackson Holiday going down swinging in the middle of the seventh. That brings us to the top of the eighth. Mount Castle going down swinging as well. A lot of strikeouts in this one. Three for Zach Jackson. Here's Santander make it four for Zach Jackson as he comes in some solid innings of relief but then it starts to get a little dicey walking christian arroyo shane eaton former oakland a prospect comes up and givens with the long run makes the play so in the bottom of the eighth inning there's reed hoffman putting the ball in right field and hoffman Brings home the tying RBI, Kenny Stevens crossing the plate. Tim Anderson trying to get it to where he can bring Reed Hoffman home, but it's unsuccessful. So we go to the ninth. Colton Kowser goes down on the call strike. Heston Kierstad hits this one high and out to right where Givens will sit under it and make the catch through the middle of the ninth. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning and Jordan Walker with a base hit with two away. Trying to start a little rally. Jason Gibbons goes down swinging though. On the inside pitch should have never swung. Adley Rushman would get his revenge though with the hit into right field, bringing home the leading run in the top of the 10th and Felix Bautista in to try to get his 24th save of the season. 
facing Tyler Soderstrom, who hits this one, gets under it into left field. Easy catch out there. Kenny Stevens hits this one, and that'll at least advance a runner, even though he's out at first. Hoffman with a chance to be the hero, but he gets very slightly under a 100-mile-an-hour pitch. And the Baltimore Orioles come in, and they take the series two games to one. Kyle Bradish gets the win, Acevedo gets the loss, and Batista gets that 24th save of the season. Not only is the draft pick signing deadline approaching, but it's the trade deadline now. And we are in buyer's position, just a half a game out of first place. AAA Aviators are three games up. The AA Rockhounds are two games up. So the whole organization is thriving on the field right now. And there are players out there on the market. The Reds are looking to deal Nick Lodolo, who hasn't had a great season. The Diamondbacks are looking to trade Jordan Lawler, which is a bit of a head-scratcher to me. But there are options out there. The Rays, the Twins, and the Angels lead the divisions in the American League with the Guardians, RAs, and the Astros all in wildcard positioning. Serious buyers could include the Rangers and Yankees, but they're under 500 right now. In the NL, the Phillies, the Cubs, and the Padres lead their divisions with the Braves, Dodgers, and Brewers in the wildcards, and the Cardinals, Marlins, and Giants all looking to buy their way into the postseason. Even though we aren't sellers, there are plenty of decisions to be made. Jose Suarez wants a contract that we just can't afford to give him right now. And he should hold plenty of trade value for a guy that has declined in war each of the last two seasons. Nasty Nestor has been just as good as we expected him to be, and I would like to keep him around if we could for the exact same money that we're paying him this year, and it looks like that's possible, so we make that deal. And then it's all about locking up Reed Hoffman. He's definitely a priority in this series. I had a custom shirt made for the guy after season number one, so he's not going anywhere if I can help it. And 11.2 mil per to keep this guy here until he's at least 30? 31 if he accepts his option when it comes time? I'm in. Let's sign that deal right now before he turns into a 90 overall plus. The Padres offer us a trade, and although I coveted Richard Graham at one time in the draft, they are not getting Kenny Stevens. So we end this episode by laughing at them. <laughs> no. Some questions left unanswered in this episode with our draft picks in limbo and what we will do at the deadline. That will all be answered at the start of the next episode. Leave your comments below on the state of the team right now and what you'd like to see done at the deadline. Who do you think is the best pick that we made after Hairston in the draft? Since they're all lucky dips and nobody really knows, it's a good guessing game. Thank you all for the support with the likes, watching the whole video, and sharing the video. It really does help out the channel a lot. The more you watch, the more you help. And thank you channel members for going above and beyond what is required to support this channel. If nobody's told you legends today, I love you FG fam.